All right, so last week that we were here, we created a video. I gave you some video clips. <clears throat> we put it all together. We have a video. What we're going to do today then is talk about creating the channel, the YouTube channel, and uploading and optimizing. You can use your own videos here, of course, or you can use the video that we created last time. If you saved a copy of the videos from last time, you can use that. If you didn't save your video from last time, I've got a copy of it in the network folder. So let's set ourselves up here. Let's go to the computer window and then the network folder, of course. So in our network folder under Campos Social 2, we'll see a folder called Video Examples Start, which is what we started with. It's got the video clips and the music, in case you still want those. And then Video Examples. I tried to rename it to be called Video Examples Final, but for some reason the network doesn't let me. So inside of Video Examples, um, that should be the final version. If you look in there, it's got our Windows Movie Maker file. That's the one that's got all of our edits saved. And then it's got the Campus Designs Moto ereview.mp4. That's the final version of the video. So what you want to do is drag that to your desktop from my network folder. Again, you can use your video that you made last week, you can use your own videos, or we can use the video that we made together last time. So just drag a copy of that. Campus Designs Moto e Review.mp4. That's all you need. You don't need the whole folder. So to remind ourselves what this looked like, <clears throat> you don't have any volume. So you can just look up here a moment. I have volume. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to run it. Hello everyone and welcome to another On The Road Review. So I'm on the road and I'm going to review the next product here. So this is the uh, Motorola Moto E phone. It's a really good phone, very high by a voice, so it's very, very cool. So the Motorola Moto X is very cool because it really learns about you. It analyzes all of your emails. So this should be familiar from last week. We edited this video together. We put text. We did different cuts. There's a transition or two in here. We've got the music playing behind the scenes. Uh, animation, different scenes, and then at the very end. Well, this is Victor Campos with another On The Road review. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And then credits at the end. So that's what we ended up with last time. Windows Movie Maker. So we saw that if we've got a Windows computer, Windows Movie Makers will let us create something like this. And the great thing about it is that it's free. It's not the most powerful software. There's, of course, Adobe Premiere, After Effects, uh, Final Cut Pro, etc., Vegas, etc., etc. There's lots of software out there. But the Movie Maker, as we saw together, was pretty straightforward, pretty uh, user-friendly. It doesn't have cool things such as picture-in-picture. Picture. It doesn't have green screen abilities. We didn't look at it, but actually we also have basic image stabilization. We didn't talk about that, but if my camera was a little too wobbly, we had an option with basic image stabi stabilization. If you're on the Mac, we don't have Macs here, obviously, but I mentioned if, you, if you're on the Mac, what might you use that is affordable and user-friendly? iMovie. So a couple of different ways to make videos as consumers. Then when you want to get very professional, that's when you're going to invest hundreds of dollars, if not thousands. Um, but one recommendation that I would make, if you want to go above iMovie or Movie Maker, we've got this software called Premiere. Premiere is, a, is software from Adobe. And Adobe, you might know, makes a very famous software. What does Adobe make? Photoshop. 
So Adobe Premiere is professional software which costs a lot of money. But there's actually a sort of a junior version of it. It's much more affordable. Adobe Premiere Elements. It's about 70 to 90 dollars. You might think, 90 dollars? I'm used to paying 99 cents for an app. Well, uh, when you're in the world of professional graphics and video and such, $90 is a steal because you're going to be paying $500 for professional software. $1,000 easily. Believe it or not, you can buy fonts that cost $2,000. Yes, just the fonts, the words on your screen. Those can cost $2,000 professionally. But Adobe Premiere Elements is a good halfway point between Movie Maker and iMovie and the professional Premiere, Premiere Elements in the middle. And here I see apparently seventy nine fifty nine at bndhphoto.com. That's it's running a sale on it right now, so oh. with their discount, it's for thirty nine. Oh, okay, wow, well, look at that. You go to it's Costco. For elements, I don't remember the word premiere. But I Most likely it is. They would not not sell Adobe Elements for $39. Add another couple zeros, and then you're in business. Uh, so, yeah, if you go look at Costco, I guess, they have it even cheaper, but Premiere... Uh, is going to be a step up of iMovie and Windows Movie Maker, but with a bigger learning curve. Everything that we talked about, the concepts still apply, but the interface will be completely different. New keyboard shortcuts, but a lot more powerful features. And so we've got a video, and we've got a plan, because back in the network folder, to bring it up back on the network folder. We have our um, PDF, Campus Social to YouTube. There were some notes there that we saw previously. We'll look at them briefly. I'll turn the printer back on a little later. But briefly, since we've already seen this, uh, these notes, YouTube notes, a uh, little bit of info on YouTube, a little bit of setup, which we'll do together. And then this is something to think about on six possible types of YouTube videos, not exhaustive. I'm not mentioning a lot of kinds of things such as conferences or, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one coachings and such. But here are six types of videos that you could possibly create with our knowledge from last time. Um, our knowledge and your content and create these kinds of videos for your company, just about any company. If I've got a real estate company, um, you know, I could do lists, a video of lists, top five locations to invest to buy for an investment property. And I do a two minute, five minute video of me talking to the camera and saying, right now Solana Beach is hot and you want to get in on it because blah blah blah. Or you want to buy a national city because prices are depressed and they will eventually come back. I could do that kind of list, top five, you know, property locations in realty. If I'm a web developer, I could do a screen capture tutorial. Uh, I could show a video on setting up WordPress for entrepreneurs and using my experience in WordPress, how to make it easy for people to set up their own WordPress site, which bleeds into a how-to video, of course. But let's say the screen capture video focuses more on computers, right? Technology, because you're recording your screen. I could do how-to video if I'm a realtor, how to find the best realtor. If you're a first home time, first time, a home buyer, and so forth, advertisements, reviews, etc. So the kind that we did together last time, which of these would it fall into? One through six. It's, a video, isn't it? it's most likely a review, number four. So the video we did last time was a number four kind of video review. And uh, then the last section here is a couple of links for you to check out on your own, vimeo.com slash video school and my video seo pro uh, this, this one down here, creating professional online video, is very useful because it will give you a nice list of what you need to do to create a professional video. And they will mention things, basic things, well things that are basic in hindsight, such as have good lighting and have good sound. Guess what? That's what a video is. Sight and sound. So if you've got good sight, good sound, you might have a good video. 
It still depends on the content, of course. But as we saw, we saw videos of unboxing, of people unboxing on an Xbox, and it had 35,000 views. You might think that's the most boring, worthless thing, someone opening a box, but not to 34,000 people. So it depends on finding your, finding your audience. And when we create our account, we will do all that we can to optimize our account to be found by an audience, number one. And then number two, we will do everything that we can to optimize individual videos. Each video we should optimize to get found. And I'm sure... Yes? Well, we talked about it last time, and what we said last time was we could show, for example, what's in a particular box. Like you're going to buy a product and you can't decide to buy this one or that one, so you, if you buy one, it's got these items. You could also be doing in the, at the same time a mini kind of review or a list. And so um, it's just opening, opening up a box of a product and showing what it is. And uh, I'm sure that you can find on YouTube, search YouTube for videos on how to use YouTube. People do that as well. They tell you how to create your profile, add a great thumbnail, all of that stuff. Vimeo Video School is very good. Uh, Vimeo is the alternative to, to YouTube. You can also upload your videos there. There's just different uh, culture there. It's, it's a lot of times much more professionally produced videos. And there's actually a paid version of Vimeo. But they've got their video school, which is free. And it talks about hardware, software, concepts, all of that stuff. We saw this last time. So on our setup here, we, which we will do in a moment, we're going to create a YouTube account. We're going to log into our Google Plus page, switch to our business account, and then go to the YouTube channel and start setting it up. So here's what we need to do. If you were here previously, we already created a Google Plus account. We've already created a YouTube account. I'm sorry, we've already created a Google account. So what you'll need to do then is, I think the easiest way will be this way. We'll go to plus.google.com. We're going to log into our Google Plus account. Go ahead and log into your Google Plus account. Uh, hopefully you remember your login from previously. Take a moment to log in. So let's take a moment. If anyone needs any help, call me over. We want to log into your Google Plus account. So when we talked about Google Plus, we talked about there being the personal account and the business account. To either of those, we can attach a YouTube account. This is unfortunately often confusing because <coughs> I've logged in and I'm in my personal account. And I can easily tell that because at the top right corner it says my name and it's got my picture. That assumes, of course, that I added my picture. At the top right corner, if I click on my, my icon, it then shows me, well, these are the different business pages that you've created. They all say Google Plus page. This one is my personal account. So what we would need to do is switch 
from our personal to our business account. Take a moment to do that while I do one thing and then we'll, we'll go on. Well, what I talk about in, in, uh, in most of my classes is that I often use the terminology of business where I don't need it necessarily make it mean literally business. It could be a personal blog, it could be a nonprofit organization, it could be anything. Specifically, your question, you have to decide if you yourself are your own brand, which probably you are, but I would still create a business account for your blog because the the business Google Plus will give you statistics and insight. How well did my posts reach an audience? Where did my traffic come from? A personal one doesn't because a personal one in Google's view doesn't need that. So I would still create a business account uh, even if it's your personal blog or whatever so you can get all of the benefits of what Google offers. Is that pretty easy to set up for business? Mm-hmm. Question? For some reason, it opened up the page that's into a framing way, and I'm not sure what to do next. Should I just go to where my picture is at the top? Yeah, go ahead and try that. Okay. Let me help you in one moment. Let me help you one moment.
Did you really go out there and find out what happened with the Buddha festival? Next time. Okay. Oh, 
Google and then Google Plus and YouTube is all connected on the same thing. Oh. But it is separate sections. Yeah. Separate sections, but it's all Google under the same account. Yeah, I have to Google Google Plus and YouTube account. So if, if you want a different YouTube account or a different Google Plus, yes. Okay. Okay, All right, so that's a little speed bump, unfortunately. There seems to be differences now in the way YouTube has set a few things up. So let me just try to uh, catch up with you. So I need to change my instructions. Or they're going to be a little bit different. Okay, uh, then hopefully, here's what we've got. Does everyone on the top right corner see an upload button and a little bell and then an icon? Does everyone see that? Okay, so um, if you click on the icon, that little circular icon, you should see something that says Creator Studio. Go ahead and click on Creator Studio because people can use YouTube in two ways as a consumer or as a creator you can subscribe to YouTube channels and consume the videos you can watch the videos replay you can comment etc So we can either be a creator or a consumer. We're about to become creators because we want to create videos and upload them and we want them to get we want to get subscribed to, we want to get commented on and liked and shared and all of that as a creator, social media. Yes. So I have under my personal creator studio, under my business it says create channel. Yeah, this is unfortunately the, the confusion that I, I guess YouTube changed things. I have that as well. You see, this one says create channel. So if you have yours that says create channel, go ahead and click on it and follow the steps. Um, I don't think everyone saw that, so it's kind of odd. I, I can't show it everyone's point of view, unfortunately. I, that's the way I would want to do it, but it doesn't seem like it's really showing up like that for a lot of people. So um, anyway, here uh, I've gone to the Creator Studio, and on the left side I see Dashboard, Video Manager, and so forth. So it's also telling me, you don't have any videos, upload them. We'll upload videos in a moment, because what I want to do is talk about the, the different settings and such that I have that I want to set the first time and then work with the channel. Uh, like most social networks, there's a bunch of settings, and if you know the proper ones that will help you the most, then you can only set them once and deal with them one time. 
So if you click on channel from the left menu, you have a bunch of settings here. Status and features, uploads, etc. I'm sorry, mine is different, so I just want to make sure where I am. I have like home, my channel subscriptions, but then here you I need have. need to go to the Creator Studio on the top right corner? No, I have the one where mm -hmm. I created a, a channel. Is that your new channel, tuning channel? Yeah. Okay, now. Oh, and now go to Creator Studio. I see. Thank you. All right, so um, there's a bunch of options here. For example, the first is to verify. This is going to be a process you want to complete because if you've got a verified account, you're going to have more options. For example, we have a very cool feature called, what do they call it now, live streaming. We have a feature where you can actually, if you plug in your camera, you can broadcast for free live from your channel. So let's say we're having a one-day sale at the store. You can turn on a live stream, and people that can't show up in person can still see what's happening. You can't do that and other things, however, until you verify. So uh, go ahead and, if you've got a verify button, go ahead and click verify. Let's see what that looks like, because it always changes. And notice here, we're not going to go further, but notice the steps are not that complicated. To verify, you're going to either get a phone call or a text message. Again, I'm not going to do this right now. You're going to do it during the break, so I'm just going to press back. But notice the verification steps don't seem that complicated. So it behooves you to verify because you'll get more features. We'll do that during the first break. Just go back. Community guidelines, hopefully, 
for everyone you've got green good standing which means you haven't violated copyrights you haven't stolen material you haven't done all that bad stuff if you did it's gonna have a different color there and it's gonna tell you how to fix it because even though you're creating your own videos for your own company and hopefully it's your own content you could still possibly run afoul of various copyright or trademark or other terms of service violations let's say you made an amazing tutorial but then you used in the background eye of the tiger that song is not free for you to use you're gonna get your video canceled and if you do that many times you're gonna get your account canceled so this is one of the places that will tell you if you've got any problems with your account such as copyright notices as well and notice you've got a little question what is this um, I'm in good standing I just made an account but as you use this you might get emails that say you've used a, an illegal song or whatever and that's a whole issue of copyrights and later on when we when we get a little deeper as I said last time YouTube provides us with thousands of free songs that we can use safely we will get to the proper screen a little bit later where that's at um, and I recommend using that. Now, I mentioned previously, you can make money off of YouTube. If you put videos out there, people can uh, help you make money in about two or three different ways. One of the ways is you put your videos out there and ads appear. And if people click on those ads, you earn money. That's one of the big ways people make money online, ads. So you don't have to do anything special. They will put ads. But what you do need to do is this. Activate monetization. It's currently off. Choose your country location before signing up. That's also a bit of a process. I'm just going to look at it briefly. Choose your country. choosing my country. We'll talk about keywords later, advertisement. So I'm just going to choose my country and click Save. And then back to status. Okay, so it's a couple more extra steps. I'm not going to go through the whole steps at the moment. Not everyone needs this or wants this. But I'm showing you here under your channel, Status and Features. This is one of the places that you go to activate monetization. And it does work, because I've made like a cool $11 off of YouTube. You can too. It takes a little bit of setup. It's not complicated. You'll just have to follow the steps. They explain it all, but it's in there. Monetization. It used to be that YouTube videos were limited to, to up to 15 minutes. I think up to 10 minutes, and then they made it 15. And so by default right now, I can put videos that are up to 15 minutes. This is saying I'm, I can enable, I'm, I have the ability to activate longer. Now some of you may not see the exact thing that I do, That's to, that I have. So that's just because I've had a YouTube account longer than most of you probably, and so I have much more cachet in my account that they will approve of. Um, so if you don't see everything here, don't worry about it. But if you do see longer videos and you do want to upload videos longer than 15 minutes, you just click Enable, which you'll have to verify, which I'm not going to do yet. So I'm going to back up. No, just don't do anything. I'm just mentioning it. External annotations. This one is not even activatable for me. Because again, some of these features I'm not going to be able to activate until I verify. Uh, don't worry about external annotations. Custom thumbnails is very useful. This is part of the SEO. This is part of getting my video found. By default, when we upload a YouTube video, it will give us a choice of three possible thumbnails taken from what's inside your video. Well, the professionals, what they do is they open up Photoshop and they create a new thumbnail for maximum impact. If I look at most of the YouTube videos out there and their thumbnails, these are custom thumbnails. This is not a shot anywhere in the video. They designed it in Photoshop. This seems like it comes from somewhere in the middle of the video, but this one was designed, that one was designed, that one's just a shot from the video, but most of the time, 
um, you're going to do better by crafting a good thumbnail, which we'll talk about. We're not able to currently add our own custom thumbnail, however, because I haven't verified my account. Paid content, you must enable monetization. Paid content is another way to make money from YouTube. You're going to make money by having ads on your videos, is one way. But another way is you can create your account on YouTube so that people have to pay to watch the videos. That has many more strings attached, however. I believe you need 1,000 subscribers minimum to be able to activate that. That's another way to make money off of YouTube. Content ID appeals relates to copyright violations and such. I don't have any recourse at the moment, but once I verify my account, I will. And I've had to deal with this for clients. There was a client, for example, that uploaded a, a video of their TV appearance. And YouTube right away said, copyright violation. So we had to file an appeal and said, this is our client. We own the original video. This is the proof. Here's the letter, etc. And YouTube said, okay, fine. So if you don't have that ability to appeal content, then your video gets taken down. In order to activate this, we again need to verify. Yes. What if you took a uh, video of an artist doing an acoustic song and put it down? Nope. You don't have any legal right to that um, for various reasons. Let's say you are at the San Diego County Fair in a concert. You say, well, I paid to get into the fair. Don't I get the, re the right to do that? No. You don't have the rebroadcast rights. This is a whole legal can of worms. So in short, any content that you did not create, 99% of the time will be taken down from YouTube. Maybe not immediately, maybe a year from now. But these YouTube servers are running 24 hours a day, analyzing every video that comes through. And it takes <coughs> time to analyze all that content. But eventually, they'll find it and they'll take it down. So really, it is about original content. Unlisted in private videos, we will have the ability to upload public videos that anyone can see in the world. We have also two other kinds of videos, unlisted and private. Once we create some videos, I'll go into more detail about what they are, but these are a couple of different ways to, make a, to put a video online so that only certain people can see. I'll talk about the differences later on, but it says, yes, you have the ability to create unlisted and private videos. Live streaming ability is not on by default, and not everyone's going to ever do this, so you may or may not care. But if you do want to broadcast live from your YouTube channel, you would need to click Enable and set up that process. Again, that goes back to verification. Uh, with verification, uh, they have to give me your phone number, um, mm -hmm. so I'll have to change that later if you want to. Yeah, you can. Um, they're going to ask either for to give you a quick automated call or send you a text message. So you can you can change it later. But um, I've never been spammed by YouTube. I've never ha had them call me or bother me about buying this or that. But uh, obviously, if if you if you care about privacy online, which everyone should, yes, that is a bit of a a little bit of a roadblock. I don't want to give YouTube my number, but if you want to en enable some of these features, you do, and you can change it later. We have a basic video editor. Windows Movie Maker is still better, and iMovie is still better. But this video editor that comes with YouTube is just a quick way to cut out a portion of the video or to add a little bit of text, but nothing that fancy like what we did last time. And the last way to make money off of YouTube is fan funding. You must verify your account. But fan funding is, uh, how many of you have heard of a Kickstarter? Kickstarter, if you haven't, is a website where people can um, upload a, um, a sort of a call uh, call to action saying, please help me, uh, my house burned down, donate. It's basically a way to gain donations, but also a way to fund projects. And so we can do that on YouTube. We can set up incentives for people to subscribe to us, to donate to us, and that sort of thing. So another way to make money. Any questions on this uh, settings, status, and features?
Okay, let's look at the next setting under channel. Let's look at upload defaults. This is part of that art and the science of SEO. Every video that we upload will have a variety of settings that we should take care in crafting. So if we are going to constantly upload the same kinds of videos, we might as well set these defaults so that we, we don't have to type them over and over. We can of course override them. Let's say I'm usually uploading how-to videos, so I want to use the keyword how-to. But maybe once in a while I'm going to upload a top 10 list. So then I want to change that to get a different keyword. I can do that. So first of all, privacy. Public, unlisted, and private. Um, whatever you want here, but probably you're going to be choosing public. All my videos by default will be public, which I can change. Category. This is one way that you get found. We don't have a lot of categories. Your particular video might not fit in a, into a particular category, but take a moment to look at categories, and you may not know yet. I'm going to mostly upload screencasts. You may not know that. It may change. You can change this. But here's various possible categories for you to, to select uh, in case you're often doing the same thing. Yes? What is people in blogs? People in blogs is one of the most generic ones, which is usually what I recommend because, okay, I've got a web design company and I want to upload how to videos about web design. So I see how to and style, but I sort of feel does, are they exclusive or are they related? The point is that, unfortunately, these categories, they need to redo these. They're very generic at one point, on the one hand, and th th they're just not specific enough. So whatever seems to fit with what you're trying to do, but oftentimes, entertainment and people in blogs is the one you'd be choosing. And then what is your education? Does that mean, does that mean just someone who is an educator or a school or a professor? Really good question. I don't quite have a definitive answer, so I'm going to do this. YouTube categories, and probably buried somewhere inside of the YouTube help file somewhere, uh, there's going to be an, a definitive answer of that. Not quite sure, but I would personally take it either or. That it's a, that it's a school uploading their educational content, or that I am putting a lot of educational how-to videos. So there's not really a wrong answer here. If you put your video, if I've got this, you know, baking video, but I put it into music, it's not going to be taken down or removed, but it just might not be found by the right people. And um, it, it behooves me to try to put it into the right category, even though they're rather limited. So let's say in my case, I'm going to suggest people and blogs. You can change it, of course. License. You're a content creator, and US copyright uh, basically says that as soon as you create something, you own the copyright to it. You don't have to technically put the copyright notice on it. You don't have to mail a copy to yourself. You don't have to register with the patent office, technically. To get more protection, if someone steals your video, then yes, you should, you should have copyrighted it, trademarked onto the US Patent and Trade Office. You should have done all of that really, really, really professional, not free stuff. But at the very least, when you create something, you own the copyright. So here you're saying, which license would you like to use? And I think, and I wish YouTube would do a better job on this screen here to explain many of these things. You are going to find it if you dig down in their help file and they'll explain it. But I wish there was a pop-up right here to tell us more of these answers. For example, what's the difference between the standard YouTube license and Creative Commons attribution? Has anyone ever heard of Creative Commons before today? Basically, the standard YouTube license is you're creating your content, you own the copyright, you don't want it to be distributed without, without you know, proper um, attribution and proper, what's the term, proper um, notification and such. That's usually what you want. Creative Commons is sort of like doing public domain. I'm putting out my videos for anyone to view and to download and to change and to upload and whatever. Creative Commons, kind of like stock images and, and 
public domain stuff. But it still recommends that the person that does that attribute you. That it says, I got this from there. So there's a couple of ways to upload your videos, and I would recommend the standard one. <clears throat> then we've got title, description, tags. Very similar to website SEO. If I've got a website, I need to craft a good title, a good description, and add tags. YouTube is the same. Now, here under title, I might this month upload how to install WordPress. Next month, I might upload top 10 Dreamweaver plugins. Next month after that is unboxing my brand new Wacom pen tablet. So it's all tech related, it's all graphic design related, but clearly different topics. So probably you will not be able to really craft a good title there right now. It depends on when you upload the video. But let's say you are going to always upload a certain kind of video. How to. If I add that there, then this will add a prefix that it will always add how to when you upload your video it'll automatically always say how to and then the name of your video let's say my particular one I'm gonna do reviews so review on my description I would recommend this add your website if someone watches the video and they look at the description, they will have an active link for them to click to go back to your website, driving more traffic potentially back to your website. So here it will always add this to the description and then I, I can then of course add more description. Or I can remove it. So on a per video basis, then I'm going to craft a better description and a better title. Tags then are also ways to add keywords to your video so that it can get found. If someone searches how to install WordPress, I could put those as keywords here, how to install WordPress. So tags here. Uh, under this default screen, it might not be as useful as when we actually upload the video, because when we upload the video, we'll get these three boxes again, but then the tags box will be better, because as you start typing something, such as, you know, how to, YouTube at that moment is going to dynamically suggest you might want to try this category, or that category, that tag, I mean, this tag, or that tag. This screen is not dynamic. You sort of need to know what the hot tags are to put here. So I, I usually don't put any tags here. When I upload the video is when I actually select my tags, because YouTube will help me to select good tags for that video. Right now it doesn't know what to suggest to you. But you still could, for example, if you've got a hashtag, that you use on Twitter or whatever, you can put your hashtag. Victor Reviews. Does it always leave comments everywhere you put a tag? Is that it, it doesn't even tell you here, but no. Um, commas are often the way to mark that, that they're different um, tags. But I believe on YouTube it's also acceptable to simply have spaces. Which is weird, because what if I want to do... Um, you know, cat video. It puts, it puts parentheses for some reason when you save it. Quotes or parentheses? Uh, <coughs> Quotes or parentheses? Quotes, I guess. Quotes. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So that's, that's another way. In quotes, cat videos. So yes, that's how you keep that keyword together. Cat videos. That's what my that's what my tag is, cat videos, in quotes. If I don't put quotes, YouTube might think, okay, this is about cats and videos, which there is a slight difference. So that's why I'm saying let's not really write anything here just yet. It'll make more sense when we add a video. 
comments and ratings allow comments users can rate can rate their video so the thing about YouTube uh, comments is um, unfortunately they can degenerate very quickly someone can write two positive things and then suddenly ten negative things simply because someone has a bad day or someone just wants to mess with people trolls and such so you may or may not want to deal with negative comments you can easily turn it off there so none of your videos will have comments you can turn the comments back on on a video per video basis sure what I recommend is allow comments but then when they're approved show them so you will have an extra step that now you have to be a comment moderator and maybe that's not going to be very fun because you're going to log into your video and for whatever reason someone took it controversial and they write something negative and you still have to see it to approve it and maybe you don't want to see those things so that's up to you to decide I personally feel I have enough of a thick skin to do this and for my clients so I turn that on allow comments approved I have to I have to read them I get an email that says new comment and I get a preview of it and then I can approve it or deny it if you don't want to deal with the negativity just turn it off and probably you will not be one of these targets that that, that you get negative comments the the big names the big companies they're the ones that get negative comments because people feel so invincible when they're anonymous anyone can create a YouTube channel, a Twitter account, and be totally anonymous and write the worst things. And it happens every day, every second. There were just 10 horrible messages right now as I finish my sentence. So um, you can decide then what to do. With that, I would recommend approve them first. You can allow people um, to view the ratings on your video. There's going to be thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm going to assume that you're going to put good, useful, and interesting content online, so you'll probably get thumbs up. If for whatever reason you get a lot of thumbs down, you don't want people to see that, you can turn it off. What's that? Vote on comments. Hmm. If you see vote on comments, you can decide to either uh, turn that on or off. So. Uh, that just lets people thumbs up or thumbs down individual comments. I might not have that because I haven't verified. But uh, if you have that extra option, again, you can decide. Do you want to let people upvote, downvote the comments? That can kind of be useful because the negative comments can be voted down and the positive ones can be voted up. So you can decide. If I'm usually uploading my video in English, I might as well select English. That way it can be found easiest by an English audience. Well, if I'm uploading my videos most of the time in Farsi, I might as well then uh, upload it or say, uh, set it as Farsi. I think you can only choose one. Let me confirm here. I've got English, but I'm going to change over to Afrikaans, and it changed to Afrikaans. So you only one at a time yeah so we can add captions to our videos captions if you ever watch a movie or a TV show and you've got text happening at the bottom while you watch the video those are captions we can do that here we can add captions but we have to say one of these options here um, usually you're going to choose the first one if you're making videos for YouTube, most likely your, your video never showed up on US TV. Maybe if it aired on television, it didn't have captions and there's all of this other weird stuff. The FCC has granted an, an exception for this. Yeah, I'm sure Congress is going to grant you your video an exception. So the first one is probably the one that will be safest for everyone. It's never this YouTube video has never appeared on TV. What if you're capturing something that has been on TV? I mean that goes to the copyrights, but that doesn't yeah. follow the copyright law just saying that, right? Um Is this how you get around copyrights? 
No, there's no easy way around them. Really, it's all about someone's property, basically. Um, yeah, I'm not sure which of these to apply to that in that case, but it would be a moot case anyway because I wouldn't be uploading stuff that I recorded myself. And I know we see m millions of videos out there that say top 10 Star Wars fight scenes, top 5 Dancing with the Stars fails. You know, everyone's always ripping off copyrighted content, but it's not going to last a long time online. The YouTube police is always on the job. So I don't know what to say about your particular question, but I would try to choose the closest one. Suggest video improvements. So when you upload your video, YouTube might say, your video looks shaky. Would you like us to add anti-shake protection? Or would you like us to increase the contrast? Or would you like us to do this and that? So it's going to suggest improvements to your video. The default is yes, show them. You can say no, I got it, I know what I'm doing. You can do what you want here. I'm going to leave the default. Usually, however, for my clients, I put the don't show me because we're uploading videos that we pretty professionally put together. We don't need the suggestions. If you're just starting off on YouTube, you might want those suggestions to help you improve your videos. You can attach a location to your videos. So let's say I'm shooting video of my of the headquarters of my nonprofit organization. We're having a, you know, a top five charities to donate to, and we're creating these videos. And we want to attach the location so people can come down to the headquarters and and participate or donate or whatever. So you can add a location. This is going to ask you for an address. search it, you put in an address and then it should show you a map and then now all of my future videos will automatically have a location attached. Not everyone needs that of course, but if it would be useful to you, that's why you would turn that on. To drive people, to drive traffic to your location, drive physical, literal traffic, not just hits to your website, but possibly people going to your location. Because if they're watching the YouTube video on their mobile device, which has GPS, and, the, and then they can see, oh, that's only two blocks away. That donut looks amazing. I'm going to tap it, give me directions, and it goes to the, to the donut shop. You're going to get a bunch of video statistics. People watch hundreds of hours per hour, I think, of YouTube videos. People are on YouTube all day long, all over the world. And so a lot of statistics are being gathered. How long uh, did people watch your video? What were their gender? All of these statistics. So you're going to get all of those stats. Would you like to show some of those stats in public? Would you like to see how many views it got and thumbs up and all of that? If you don't want to, you can turn that off. So for example, if I'm just starting off on YouTube, I don't want everyone to see I've got one view. Thanks, mom. But I don't want to. I don't want to just have one view, two view, ten views. And maybe when I'm getting a little more popular, because as we've talked about with social media, popularity breeds popularity. If I've got a lot of followers on Twitter, I can get more followers on Twitter. If I don't have very many followers on Twitter, I probably won't get very many followers. If I have a lot of views on a YouTube video, I'll probably get more views on a YouTube video. This is just just to show the statistic. It doesn't really affect anything. But this is sort of like an ego thing, and also popularity breeds popularity. So at the moment, maybe don't show it because I'm brand new. Once I get some traction, go ahead and show it. If you make any changes on any of these screens, remember to click Save on the top right. So go ahead and save. Any questions on this screen? Okay, next screen, featured content. This needs a little bit of setup. We will not be able to do anything here really just yet. But we've got featured content. Under featured content, once we start uploading videos, we can have a channel ad. This is a video that will automatically... Okay, look up here. Everything that I'm talking about is inside of this section right here. So I'm just going to the next section. So the channel ad here is going to be 
what's the video that automatically is going to be promoted to more people? Let's say I've got 10 videos, but one of my videos I want to show more often to people. So I can select it. I don't have any videos to show yet, so I can't select a channel ad yet. But once I've got videos, this is going to be the one that will stand out to more people. Question? If you don't have a feature, Probably you haven't verified your account. Mm -hmm. And then we've got featured playlists as well. So featured video and... So those are just other ways to show off your content. Once you've got 5, 10, 20 videos, maybe there's a few videos you want to show off. That's under featured. Yes. Remember to raise your hand, please. There was a person ahead of you. Yes. Yes. This is uh, this is just going to be when someone visits your channel, they will see this video that you're promoting. That's different than those ads that we see before or after videos. That's different, and that is not free. This one is free on our channel. Question here. Well, you've got a bunch of videos and you want one to really stand out. You're going to feature it. So you select that video and then it will automatically show that video as many times as it can. Or the playlist. Oh, is this where where you go there and all of a sudden these little, little boxes appear with a tiny image or a message of what's the next thing. Yeah, that's, that's related to that, that's yes. That's what they're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Is this just as they're watching your, your videos and playlists, not other people's? That's a good question. I'm not exactly sure because let's say I, I go to look up some video about doing some home improvement um, or someone, someone looks a home, at a home improvement video. I'm not exactly sure if my video will show up to them because they're looking at home improvement. I sort of feel no because what this is saying is across all your videos. But there are ways for your video to show up after other people's videos, but that's slightly different. Branding. So did you decide yes or no? Well, as I said, we don't have any videos to show off, so we can't do anything here. Let's go over to branding. Again, I don't really have much to do here, but this is cool. We can add a watermark. We can add our own little logo to all of our videos so that when our video gets shown throughout YouTube, it will automatically have my logo. I believe the logo also is clickable. So if someone finds my video, how to install WordPress, and they watch it, my logo is going to be on it, and I believe they can click on it. I don't remember if that will then go back to the channel or back to your website, but this is a way to brand your videos. Let's look at advanced. Can I go back to branding for a moment? Mm -hmm. So, if you're designing um, a logo, mm -hmm. um, and you don't have one yet, then maybe you would want to design something that's going that would fit on uh, YouTube if you have that in mind, or would you want to do? Um, a separate YouTube uh, brand? No, you would want to keep your brand consistent. Same. It's always the same McDonald's logo, it's always the same Nike logo, it's always the same continuing education logo. It's just repurposed, either on a flyer or on a video or in a tweet, but it's always consistent. So I, unless you have a big reason to, I would keep the same branding throughout. Use the same logo as on your website, as on your Twitter account, on your YouTube, on your watermark here. Question? Um, on the watermark, does it show like, like a layer on top of your video or is it in the corner? It's a layer on top of your video in the corner. 
It doesn't take it doesn't take over your whole video. It's just in the corner, but it is a layer on top of your video. That's okay. Advanced, and then we're we're coming up with a break under advanced. I created the account, and in my case, it's got the name of my company. Yours may or may not have it, but there's a button to change it. And then you've also got a um, a way to change the logo. But if you've got a YouTube, if you've got a Google Plus account, hopefully it took the name and the logo of your Google Plus. If it didn't, there's a couple buttons there to change that. We're based in the U.S., so we should probably leave it there. Channel keywords. So in general, the channel itself can also have keywords. So here I would take a moment to actually craft some, some keywords. For example, how dash two. This is going to be about my how-to videos. Space. This is going to be reviews. Space. This is going to be, um, let's say I'm usually reviewing smartphones. Smartphones. But that's a problem there. I want smartphones to be one word together. Right now technically it's smart and phones. So if someone was looking up how to be smart, they may find my channel because I have the keyword smart instead of smartphones. So to have a keyword that is more than one word, you put it in quotes. So now when people search smartphones, they will find me, not simply someone searching how to be smart. How to be smart good. So a few keywords here. Um, the more the better, but at a certain point there's diminishing returns. You might have 30 keywords. That's too many. You're too diluted because good content is, is focused. This is the larger concept in SEO. I'm going to want to create content related to my niche. A financial website is always going to be tweeting financial stuff, not cooking stuff, not baking stuff. So here, what you know, five to ten keywords can I put in related to what I'm going to be video blogging about, but not so far, so far off field that I dilute my brand, that I hurt my SEO. So it's a space keyword to be space um, separated or comma separated. Let me confirm. Usually I do space separated, but let me just save it. Yeah, it's uh, it should be space. You know, advertisements allow advertisements to be displayed alongside my videos. This is going to relate to monetization, but to fully activate monetization, next we would need to go here, AdWords account linking. We would create a free AdWords account, which is sort of like the escrow account that holds your money until they transfer it to your bank account. We're not going to do this together, but you can follow the link in on your own, see how that is set up. And it is a bit of a process. It will ask you to verify a real address in the real world. It will ask you to verify your social security number and provide a W-9 and a bank account. So in a sense, it's very intrusive, but it's dealing with real money. So when we deal with real money, we need to be verified because any 12-year-old could set this up, even though you have to be 13 to use YouTube, any 12-year-old can set this up and get money from their account. Well, not unless this is properly set up. So it will ask you several questions, and uh, I've gone through it several times, and it's, you know, quote-unquote intrusive, but so is getting a bank loan. So is signing up to take classes here. All of that information is necessary for legitimate purposes. And this is optional. You don't have to set this up. But if you're going to make money off of your YouTube, you need to set this up. <coughs> yes. Okay, channel recommendations. I would highly suggest that this one is always turned on to allow my channel to appear in other channels' recommendations. This is how my how-to video shows up after someone else watches a different how-to video. So this is what you were saying previously, Nicole, about all those little boxes, suggested videos. That's how I get suggested on someone else's video. If I don't want that for some reason, turn it off. 
I do want it. You do probably want it. We've got subscriber count. Again, <laughs> popularity breeds popularity. If it shows I have zero followers, well, my mom liked my video, but she never followed my account, uh, then I might not want to show that I have zero followers, zero subscribers. The technical term on YouTube is subscribers. And while I'm a, while I'm a beginner, maybe I don't want to show I've got two subscribers. But as I start to build 10 of them, maybe 11, 12, 20, 40, maybe you want to show that off because popularity breeds popularity. If people see people are subscribing to his channel, I might as well too. That's useful. If you took my SEO class and we talked about Google Analytics, we talked about that Google Analytics will let you track a variety of, bun uh, of amounts of data very minute data, such as how long someone stayed on your site, what smartphone they used, what uh, cell phone network they were on, what location, lots of data. And data, or knowledge, is power. Once you know that I'm getting a lot of traffic from iPhone users, perhaps I will craft videos to target that audience. Once I see that I'm getting a lot of traffic from San Diego, perhaps I will craft videos that target San Diego. I won't know some of that data, unless I set up my Google Analytics with my YouTube. We don't have time to do it in this class, but if you took the SEO class, we talked about it to some degree there. If you link the two accounts, Google Analytics will then tell you all of this great data. Just go into Google Analytics, right? Yes. Just go into Google Analytics settings and it will show your tracking ID. Yes, exactly. Uh, one of the many settings screens that it has, but there's going to be a setting screen in there. It'll tell you your tracking ID. It usually starts with UA dash something, because you're going to see a bunch of code, the big block of code you add to your website, but the actual tracking ID is just a little chunk that says UA dash something. Put that in here, save it, and then now you're going to track your traffic via Google Analytics. We'll save this screen if you made any changes. And so we spent some time uh, dealing with these channel settings. What I would recommend if you can, we're about to take a break, but I would recommend during the break take a moment to go to status and features and do the verify process. That way you can get the most features. It's 157, we'll be back at 210. When we come back, we will talk about uploading the video and other great things.